Tell me if this sounds familiar. You build Lego growing up, but at some point you start doing new hobbies and stop collecting so much. But then years later, you pick up a set just to build it for some nostalgia. And because it's so much fun, you end up picking a couple more and a couple more up. Then you quickly run into problems as your bank account struggles to cover all of the new Lego sets that release. And also you start to run out of display space. Plus FOMO or the fear of missing out is also really common. And you feel like you kind of have to collect every single Lego set that releases. So being an adult fan of Lego is not easy. And and it all starts with telling yourself you're going to be responsible with your hard-earned adult money. And that's exactly what I told myself when I got back into collecting. It was a really exciting time of rediscovery and through YouTube I was able to find out about all of the sets I'd missed out on and also see some of the incredible mocks being designed by members of the community. And so I began telling myself that now I could buy all of the sets I'd always wanted with my new adult money and build my dream Lego collection and also even start building and designing mocks. But little did I know just how expensive this was going to be a couple of quick bricklink searches later and I knew that while it was still going to be possible it was going to take a lot of time and patience. Now I know everyone has different reasons for collecting Lego as an adult and I'd love to hear some of yours down in the comments but for me it all started back in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic when I decided to organize my entire 20,000 piece childhood parts collection. At this time I was pretty depressed and found a lot of peace of mind and joy in building Lego again. I was even able to rebuild and save the UCS N1 Starfighter, one of the first sets I ever got and a set that I used to really love playing with and just kind of imagining that I was young Anakin Skywalker in the Phantom Menace and as you can see it's in pride of place on my display even in all of its scratched chrome glory. Now very quickly I am giving away a free sealed copy of Jedi Bob Starfighter. I'll be announcing the winner on the 13th of August and all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and comment down on this video. Now before buying Lego there's obviously some important things that we have to take care of first like looking after our family, paying our rent and our bills, buying clothes and food. And so with all this in mind, I knew that it wasn't going to be easy to build my dream Lego collection. And I think we can all relate to buying a set that you've wanted for a while. Maybe you saw it leak early or you've just been saving up to get it. You finally build it, you play with it and you get to display it. And then already within a week or two, you're thinking about what the next set is that you're going to buy and build. I remember back in 2022 when the ATTE Walker with Commander Cody released. And I told myself that this was just going to be one big set that I purchased as a treat. But after I built it, I realized I was so wrong because it was so much fun building it. And this is the reality of collecting Lego as an adult, especially when Lego is targeting us as a market. And it was not so much of a problem growing up because I think most of us probably received our Lego sets as birthday or Christmas gifts. But 12 years later, and now I am an adult with some disposable income. And so every single time I walk into a retail store, the thought of buying a Lego set enters my head. And even when I know that I should not be buying Lego, my mind is really good at coming up with excuses as to why I should buy this specific set. It's gonna retire soon or maybe the minifigures are exclusive or even that I might be able to use the parts in my mock building later on. And this list honestly goes on so let me know some of the excuses you've come up with down in the comments because as Lego collectors I know we all have them. And while deciding what to buy is a tricky first step the real issue is my space problem and I'm not talking about Lego space I'm talking about physical space. And honestly this is probably every collector's worst enemy. Don't get me wrong dust is pretty bad too but you do actually have somewhere to display your sets in order for them to get dust. And I actually recently moved into my first home, which actually meant leaving my childhood bedroom where I couldn't stand up in most of the room and moving into a small one bedroom flat where there isn't a lot of space for displaying my Lego collection. And also when my friends and family visit, I don't really want them just tripping over Lego sets and for there to be nothing else in my flat. Now there are a couple of solutions that I came up with to working around collecting Lego in a smaller space. First off was to buy some tall shelving units that also have drawers at the bottom. I also have a constant process of selling sets that I no longer need getting new parts in, sending out mocks that I'm commissioned to build. And because I have my one main bookcase, I'm able to really focus in on displaying my most nostalgic and favorite sets. But there are collectors with way more sets than me. And so just imagine what they have to go through to keep their collections organized. Now, the reason that so many of us collectors are buying so many sets and running out of display space in the first place is because there's just so many different Lego themes to choose from. There is, of course, all the popular mainstay themes like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel, and even the smaller ones like Marvel. Minecraft or Mario Kart. But then we have the original Lego themes like Ninjago, Friends and Dreams. Growing up, I was a huge fan of Lego Bionicle and also Lego Exo Force. And then there are even some collectors who only build and collect Lego City sets and just build giant Lego cities. Another problem that I didn't even realize when I first got back into Lego is how dangerous buying old sets can be. And it becomes pretty difficult to balance buying these vintage sets and also keeping up with the new releases that you might want to collect. Six months ago, if you were to ask me what I was collecting, I would have 
have said that I was only buying vintage Lego Star Wars sets. Three months ago, I'd have said that I've got most of those sets that I wanted to pick up, and I'm now focusing more on the newer releases. But if you were asking me today, I'd say it's a real mixture of both, along with lots of parts orders for mock building, and also collecting some nostalgic themes like Exo Force and Bionicle. I feel like I'm pretty good at resisting buying everything I want when I go into the Lego store, but for other way more dedicated fans, when they go to the Lego store, they're buying anything and everything that looks cool to them, and I can respect that. But this wouldn't be a very accurate video talking about collecting Lego as an adult without discussing the prices that Lego sets are selling at. We have been seeing inflation and price increases across all Lego themes, but especially in Star Wars and Marvel in the last few years. I miss the days when I was younger and I could just walk into the Lego store and pick up a $10 Star Wars battle pack. Fast forward 20 years and fans now have to pay almost $30 just to get a couple of clone troopers and then some small builds that are probably just going to end up in the parts bin. And this year has also been really tricky with a lot of big and cool Lego sets coming out from the new Dungeons and Dragons set to Lego Icons Baradur. We've also got the UCS Jabba's Sail Barge coming and that's without mentioning all of the Lego Star Wars 25th anniversary sets and minifigures. Now let's be realistic because as a business and a corporation it makes sense that Lego is raising their prices. In the last five years they have become the biggest toy company in the world by two billion dollars and they know that their product is going to sell well pretty much no matter what price they put it at. And so if I was in their shoes I would probably be doing the same thing even if my community wasn't too happy about it. But I would be making sure to give both ends of the target audience exactly what they want to see. Younger fans using their pocket allowance should be able to go out and buy a cool little $20 set capturing an iconic scene from a movie and not some weird little made-up mech. Even smaller new little play sets like Escape from the Sarlacc Pit are retailing for the best part of $100. And honestly I do think that Lego's recent pricing is pushing out some of the fans with lower incomes. Obviously they know what they're doing. If they saw a big drop in sales then they would fix that. But let me know what you think of Lego's recent prices down in those comments. I'm sure you have an opinion and I'd love to hear it. And finally I want to talk about FOMO or the fear of missing out. With Lego releases happening almost every month at this point, my Instagram and YouTube feeds are constantly filled with new set leaks and huge Lego hauls. Now, of course, sharing your Lego hobby isn't a bad thing. I'm a Lego content creator myself, but you really don't have to buy sets on release day and you definitely don't need to buy every single set that releases. And for those watching who are not able to buy the sets that they wanted, it can be a slightly negative experience. And I think we could create a community that isn't all about brand new sets and huge Lego hauls, but it's more about enjoying the Lego sets that you already have in your collection. And yeah, Lego collectors with a huge backlog of unbuilt sets. I'm looking at you guys. But like I said way back at the start of this video, being an adult fan of Lego is not easy, but that's kind of what makes it fun and rewarding too. Let me know all of your experiences with Lego collecting down below. And if you're new here, then don't forget to subscribe, but I'll see you guys on the next video.